Okay, hello student. Myself, Namita Mukhya, Assistant Teacher, Nepali Girls Higher Secondary School. So today I have taken one important chapter on education, that is educational statistic. In my last class, we have done educational statistics, but today we are doing majors of the central tendency. Now children, in our last class, we have collected the data, we have tabulated the data, but those data which are collected needs to be analyzed. Now, the data which you obtain on educational achievement of the individual, it has to be arranged or analyzed. Now, there are different techniques which we follow in the statistic that is from a very simple to the complex ones. Now, all these statistical procedure or the technique for measuring the central tendency in all of those now there are the measures of the central tendency is the very easiest one in the measures of the central tendency first we need to deal with mean now mean it is a numerical value which indicates the parity of measurement. Parity means the equality of measurement between the two dissimilar objects. To explain you in details, I have written that for example, the cost price of one pen is rupees 40 and the cost price of the second pen is 30. Now arithmetic mean what you do is it just like taking out the average. So over here the formula for the arithmetic mean is sum of the score divided by the total number of the score. So now the cost price of the first pain is rupees 40 and the cost price of the second pen is 30. Now it has to be divided by the total number of score. Now how many pain we need to buy or we have is 2. That means this is the first pen and this is the second pen. Now 40 plus 30 is 70. It has to be divided by 2. So you get answer that is 35. So 35 is the average price of two pain that is the first pain and the second pain. Now we can say that arithmetic mean it is the sum of the set of the values divided by the number of the values or the number of the score. Now there are two ways of determining mean. The first one is mean of group data and the second one is the mean of group data. So first we will deal with determining the mean of the ungroup data. So what I do I'll write here formula for that mean equals to sigma x sigma x divided by n. Now over here Sigma, this means sum of and x as you know already that x is the score. That means sigma x means the sum of all the score and we need capital N that is total number of scores okay now today we'll start with the mean of the ungroup data so here are some numbers now you have to determine the arithmetic mean of the following scores so scores are given over here now there are two formulas the first one is the simple one that is mean equals to sigma x by n now here x sigma means the sum of x means the score, n means the total number of the score. Now another formula which is known as, which is also called assumed mean method and the formula for this is m dash, m dash is your assumed mean. You will take one number, suppose you will take one number as your 
mean x or the sigma means the sum of x dash is the deviation of each score from this assumed mean and n means the total number of the score. So what we do is we will first do this one that means mean is equals to sigma x by n. Now over here what I do mean equals to I am writing the formula sigma x by n. Now these numbers which you have got over here are not arranged in proper order. So now no need to arrange this number. Now first what you do is sigma x, x means sum of all those numbers. So you write down 38 plus 35 plus 20 plus 48 plus 52 plus 44 plus 58 plus 54 plus 31 plus 44. Now please count all those numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 and 10. So we have 10 scores over here also 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 and 10. So all of this has to be divided by the number of score. So number of score means we have already 10 numbers. Now you go on adding all this number and you will get 424 which has to be divided by 10 okay so the sum of all this number is 424 it has to be divided by 10 so how much you'll get is 42.4 so this is the mean of this isolated score okay now we are applying the next formula that is from the assume mean method. Now over here my formula is m dash plus sigma x dash by n. Okay. Now in the assume mean method what we need is we need to arrange the numbers in a column. So which I have already done. Now next column what I need is of x dash. So x dash means over there you know that is the deviation of each score from m dash. So I think that m dash I hope that all of you are very confused that what is m dash mean. So remember m dash mean your assumed mean. Now this assumed mean is that you take any number from this particular scores any number as to be your mean that means you are taking this number as mean suppose I'll take 52 as my assume mean so I'll write m dash is my 52 over here also I'll write 52 is suppose I'm choosing this number as my mean now what I'll do over here is x means the scores minus m dash it means that x means your 38 now your m dash is 52 so 52 what it gives you it gives you 38 now my score is 38 minus m dash that means assume mean is my 52 so subtract this so you'll get 14 but as we know that the bigger number has got minus sign so minus sign seven you just write down minus 14 in the similar way my next number 35 minus 52 so how much we will get is minus 17 now my next number is 20 minus 52 so 52 so my next number is 32 and this is also minus after that 48 minus 52 so minus 4 and this number 52 although the number is also 52 and m dash is also 52 so it means that this is 
0. In the similar way, 44 minus 52, so they will get minus 8. Now over here we have score 58 minus 52. So over here my answer is 6 but although this number is 58 is bigger than 52 and it has got plus sign so plus 6. Similar way 54 minus 52 this is also plus so plus 2. Now 31 minus 52 so you will get the answer that is minus 21. Now 44 minus 52 here also you will get minus 8. So now you have numbers which have either minus sign or the plus sign. So what you do you add those number which, e, which have minus sign and those number which have similar sign that means 6 and 2 have similar sign so that that number is plus 8. So you add 14, 17, 32, 4, 8, 21 and 8. All of these numbers when you add all this number you will get minus 104. Now this is your x dash but in the formula itself what you need is sigma x dash. So now at the end now this is a sum of x dash that means when you have this number and this number when you subtract it the answer is your sigma x dash. So out of 104 if you subtract 8, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So how much you will get is 96. But since this number 104 is minus over here 96 will also be minus. Okay, now we need to put the formulas, we need to apply this in the formulas. So, mean equals to m dash plus sigma x dash divided by n. Now, you all, you have m dash also, sigma x dash also and n. So, my n dash is how much? Okay, this is 52. Now, 52 plus sigma x dash how much we have this is 96 but minus 96 it has minus sign now divided by number of the score so capital N how much we have is 10 so 10 now you what you do is you put this thing in bracket because you cannot take out LCM directly so now 52 plus 96 divided by 10 is minus 9.6. Okay, now next step 52 plus into minus is minus 9.6. So you just subtract this 2. 52, 52 minus 9.6, you will get the answer 42.4. So, similarly, this is your answer. So, the answer when you followed the first method that is mean sigma x by n, that there also you have got the same answer, and from the assume mean method 2, you are getting the same answer. Okay. So whatever we have done till so far, I'll summon how many J going to this is how many first for you. Mean, mean, to find out the mean of the isolated score and also to find out the mean of the group score. Now, we, you already know that children that mean is the numerical value which indicates the parity or the equality between the two dissimilar object. Now, apart from this mean, there are other measures of this central tendency, those are median and the mode.
Now there are different formulas for median and the mode we will do later. Now why we why mean is needed in education? So when we need the exact central measures of the score, we need to apply mean and as well as it is necessary to determine the further significance of the score received. That means those score which you we receive during uh, the statistic in the statistic that has to be determined in a further way. At that time also we have to apply mean. Now we have already finished this and now what is assume mean? That means any one number of the score which is imagined to be the adjoint mean or it is the first mean. But that number has to be very close to the score. Now apart from that you must remember what is class interval. Now the class interval is the gap or you can say the difference between the two numbers that is in this case we have two numbers that is 15 and 19. So 15 and 19 the gap between 15 and 19 is 5. So we can say that there is interval of 5. intervals In a similar way 15 one number is 15 and the other number is 17. So here we have interval of 3. Now this is very important because certain times in the examination find out or to tabulate you will be given numbers either you have to arrange those numbers in the interval of 5 or in the interval of 3. So you you must have the knowledge of the class interval. Now the next we need is the raw score. Now raw score are the marks which you obtain during or in your examination. These are the marks or the performance of an individual during any examination. If in case if you appear for any competitive examination also they will examine, they will evaluate you all through certain question. So on the basis of your performance, the examiner will decide your achievement, your achievement. So in all this, it is very important, all of these are very important. You need to remember it and remember this statistic is very scoring. You will be able to score if you have the knowledge of this statistic, if you practice it regularly, it will be easier for you to score more marks. So today, I mean, kiki gorio banda kiri jai. First is, I mean, majors of the central tendency gorio, where we have done to find out the mean of the isolated score. We have followed the two formulas. The first one is the uh, assume mean methods. And the second one is the short method that is sigma x upon n. Okay. Now, apart from this, we have done that what is mean, what is the importance of mean and when we use mean and the class interval, raw scores and other majors of the central tendency. Now it is very important children that this particular subject or this particular topic is very scoring. So if you practice it regularly at home, it will be easier for you to obtain marks. So please practice it regularly and we will continue our next that is the majors of the central tendency. We will continue with the mean only that is the tabulation of or the finding out the mean through group method we will continue it in our next class. So till today thank you.